Welcome to CARE. I'm your host, Marsha Riley, and this week our topic is homeschooling and TNT. So before we jump into this week's topic, I want to just introduce our guests. So we have Karima McKenzie. Karima is a single mom, wrapping it for the single moms and entrepreneurs. I really want to hear how she's able to homeschool, be a single mom, and run a successful business. We have Nikisha Rodriguez. Rodriguez. Nikki is another phenomenal lady. Nikki is a homeschooling mom of six. She has several businesses, including a phenomenal boutique in the west of Trinidad. She does image consul consultancy. I'm going to let her say, talk about it because I don't want to mess it up. And she's the one of the founding members of the Homeschooling Association of Trinidad and Tobago. And representing the guys, the dads, is recently, uh, he, he's new to the, the, the world of family and our former national cricket captain, are you still a cricket, former, are you still a cricket captain? I, I don't follow cricket, I'm sorry. <laughs> He's a former national cricket captain, Riyad Emirates. So I'm, before we get into the topic, you know, I'm gonna ask you guys to say something about yourselves so that, you know, because I, I can't give you, I can't do you justice. So let's start with, let's start with Riyad. Riyad, tell me about yourself. I know you recently started a business as well. Yeah, um, well, I'm Riyad Emirates, um, national, Cricketer. Um, I represented the West Indies for two ODIs. Um, I have uh, just started a business as well. Um, it's a cricket equipment store um, where you can get all your cricketing stuff as well as clothing. Um, can I get clothing as well, or is it just for guys? No, it's it's going to be for male and female. Um, a lot of gym stuff as well, gym clothing in fact. Um, so we we're doing that. Um, so yeah, it's, it's something new to me. Is uh, I always wanted to get into business after cricket. Okay. Um, I had a lingerie store like about ten years. Oh, ago. nice. Uh, <laughs> we, we might have to get some more information yeah. on that. <laughs> yeah, but um, I, I didn't have the time to see about it, um, so I had to to get rid of it. But now I get back. Me and another cricketer, Imran Khan, we're both partners in it. So yeah, um, I'm doing that now, and hopefully I can branch off to some other stuff. And you recently got married and had a baby girl. How is that going? Tell us about family life. Yeah. The um, transition from traveling all the time. I mean, now you have you have someone to leave behind. How does yeah, that work? It's, it's um. I must say, you know, having my daughter now is the most enjoyable thing in my life. Um, I'm married two years now. I'm married to a wonderful wife who is not. Um, I shouldn't say best thing, but you know, I because she understands. <laughs> Because she understands my job, um, right. you know, I should, Pestin is not the, the right phrase I should use, but... Um, but she's quite understanding. Yeah. Okay. And, um, you know, she's, she's very caring. She, she understands my job, so it's... That's she's able to, to hold on home team while you're gone. Yeah. And well, that's my, excellent. Um, my daughter, as you say, is she, she's going to be two next month. And it's, it's very difficult now, you know, leaving because I travel so much. You know, I, I actually count down the days when I'm, I'm getting back home. Right. And um, you know, uh, it's it's something that I, I realize now is when I go to practice and I come back home at night, you know, she just wait to hear that door click. Right. And she's running the you know, daddy, 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 daddy. So you daddy. see, homeschooling might be something that you might be interested in. Yeah. So so you know, we could jump mama and baby on a plane and go with you, and it's not gonna affect her. Yeah. So so this might be you know a good topic for you to be in. Yeah, Nikisha's um, gonna, Nikisha is certainly <laughs> gonna convince you by the time we finish the conversation. Um, yeah, she's, she's, um, I must say she's, she's brilliant. Um, for some reason, the iPad is an amazing piece of equipment. She learns a lot. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I know they say this era is the iPad era for kids. But you know she's very intelligent and I don't know if she get it from me or her mom. But well I, I follow I follow I follow the, the Instagram pictures and he seems to be a very proud daddy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's great. It's always great to see the dad stepping up. Yeah, yeah. So Nikisha, you tell us about yourself. Okay, well my name is Nikisha, Nikisha Rodriguez. I go by Nikki. I have two businesses, like I said, um, Daughters of the King, it's a boutique in the West. I carry designer clothing for men, but not for the designer price tag. I also do image consultancy. The name of that business is Made in His Image Consultancy Services. Both of them are on Facebook. Um, and I just basically catch the needs of women, just helping to boost their self-esteem, getting them to you know, brand themselves prof professionally and personally, 
I also do workshops for teens and for adults as well to get them makeup courses and so forth to get them looking and feeling their best. Right. That's what I'm about. And you homeschool six children. Yes, and they're all mine. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Most people ask me, are they all yours? Normally we go out somewhere and people are like, oh, these are, yes, they're all mine. I normally want to think sometimes, just take a picture, it will last longer because people <laughs> stare at us like if we are some kind of an anomaly, which I know in this day and age we may be. But um, yeah, so six children. But she looks phenomenal. <laughs> like she is amazing. <laughs> you know, Nikki was the person that I had gone to when I was considering homeschooling. You know, and so she guided me through the process. And so for me, it was really, you know, I jumped at the opportunity to have her on the show. And I was happy when she said, you know, she had the time. Yeah. And I, I never understand when she always has the time. You know, yeah. it's so funny. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's so funny that she always has to time. Someone, because someone did it for me. Yes. You know, she's not with us today, Bernie yeah. High. But she did the same for me, yes. you know. And so it's just a matter of giving back and paying it forward. And, it, it, you know, it's funny because, you know, some people say, you know, I don't have the time. And there are always those people that are just so busy to help. And with everything that you have going on, you have two demanding businesses. Yeah. I mean, you have your husband. You have six children and you're homeschooling and you always have time to help someone. Yeah, whenever so, you know, I can. Congratulations. Yeah, by God's grace. Congratulations <laughs> on so that. Welcome. So, and our final guest is Karima McKenzie. Hi. Hi. Karima McKenzie Thomas. Thomas. It's oh, all sorry. mine. It's all mine. <laughs> and and yeah. Um, so I run I do creative business and personal development. Okay. Which really means I do a number of things that help people to build better businesses or live better lives. Uh, so I have a variety of clients, usually more along the small and medium business scale. Um, and that can look in, that can look anyhow. To Give us an example. Confined. So, right. Um, and so I do, sometimes it looks like helping them problem solve because they're stuck. Sometimes it looks like creative visioning. Um, you come to me and I help you see where you want to go. And by figuring out where you want to go, the other way I help you is by helping you to build bridges. So generally, that's what I tell clients. I help my clients build bridges from where they are to where they want to go, okay. right? Um, and that, that could be infrastructure, that could be changing your mindset and your perspective, because sometimes you're locked in a perspective and the perspective stops you from getting somewhere. Not that it's the reality, but it's your experience right. and what you've held on to, right. So sometimes it's in mind, sometimes it's creative cash flow. So I don't believe in debt. Um, there are always ways to make income. And I, I, I live that. Um, I have a number of skills and talents and all through my life, I have used as many of them as possible at any one point in time to make money. Uh, I live that now. So I have my business. I also freelance doing news on the radio. I write and read news. I do voiceovers. I do events. I, right? Everybody has a basket of skills and talents. Um, and so for me, part of being an entrepreneur is first of all using yourself as your business. And so I try to help my clients understand that as well. It's great to have a business, but how are you using yourself? How are you leveraging all your gifts and talents to make money? Because at the end of the day, that's why you do any business. Yeah, passion or no passion, you're doing the business to make money, right? Um, and so for me, where homeschooling came in is, I was never happy with the education system. I wasn't happy with it when I went through it. Um, I was a child that talked a lot and moved around a lot. <laughs> and that was a problem for most teachers. And I started my life in a small private school and then got put in public school. And um, I w it was trauma. I went from having teachers called auntie to having to remember surnames and that transition alone was traumatic because I had teachers tell me things like I look like your auntie I'm not your auntie right I mean no it was bad it was right and then you're getting beat for walking around the class or for talking and I, I, I remember at eight or nine making a decision that my child would never go to public school um, because I hated it so much right and then even secondary school the best part of secondary school for me was the extracurricular oh, it's great <laughs> I was in every sport, I was debating, I was helping all the house activities, I was in choir, I was, yeah, right? I was that kid. The teachers needed something done, find me wherever I am in whatever class, I'll come, <laughs> right? Um, and so 
My thing is, and nobody can answer me, why did I have to learn Pythagoras theorem? They still can't tell me. <laughs> I mean, it's great for people who want to build things and do engineering. And why did I need to learn Pythagoras theorem and vectors and matrices? Nobody, and I, and I have a math brain, I got a one in math. Why? Well, right? What was, what was he stressed for? And I think for me, that's the bedrock of my issue with the education system, the undue stress and even trauma in some cases that we lay on children's shoulders from the age of, because now they're doing national tests at six. Um, so that's what informed my decision to homeschool. And it's all online, right? There's every subject you could think of there are numerous so applications. I'm going to cut you a little bit because Sorry. we don't want to talk about homeschooling Sorry. just yet. My bad. We just <laughs> want to you. <laughs> because I know that we're all so passionate yeah. about, I mean, I, I'm not sure if our viewers know that I'm a homeschooling mom as well. And I mean, very much I, I share the same story as Karima, not enjoying my personal school experience. And then, I mean, well, I tried it. I didn't have that, that, um, that conviction that she won't do it because everyone's different. And I hoped maybe she would have been able to go through it. But she was certainly not enjoying it as well. And for me, it was, look, you know, let's explore this option. I've, I saw one of my very good friends. I mean, she's on to baby number two now. She's, so she's a mature girl, you know, and um, I've seen, I see her stand out. And I remember from, yes. So, cause of course it's easy to say, okay, well, they're great now at four and five, but when you can see someone who's 28 years old, really stand out in society, and she is a product of homeschooling. And then of course, Nikisha's children, you know, they're now at that teenage years. And Nikisha's children, I mean, they always stand out. They are just really, really impressive, you know? And um, that made me say, you know what? Let me sort of consider it. And it's so funny because before that, I was like, the one thing that we're gonna do is hire a tutor to do home, home, homework with you, because I can't do homework. And it's funny, you know, it's funny how God works because Within one term, I had gone from, oh my gosh, I cannot do this. I cannot teach you to spell cat. Somebody else has to do this. To homeschooling, you know? So it really is funny. Sometimes you're just, you're just called to do it. So we're gonna take a break now, and when we come back, we are gonna jump into our topic of homeschooling in TNT. I mean, Nikisha will tell us whether it's very different in the Caribbean, or you know how different it is moving from country to country as well. Stay with us, we're coming back just now. on social media. So we're going to break now and go into our sex ed capsule number two. Mommy, why do boys get to show their boobs? That's because boys don't have boobs. A good way to know what's your private parts are the body parts that are covered by your swimsuits. So boys only have the bottom parts covered by their swimsuits, but the girls have the top and the bottom parts. And actually, we shouldn't use boobs because we should use the proper names for our private parts. Because if you have to report a bad person, not everyone's going to know your home names. What are home names, Mama? Well, home names are the names that we use at home to describe our private parts. But the proper names for girls' private parts are called the breast, that's the top part, and the bottom parts are called the bottom, and for girls it's called the vagina, but for the boys it's called the bottom, and their private parts called the penis, and boys don't have boobs so they don't have a top private part. Yes? Okay, Mama. All right.
and we're back. And we're going to jump straight into homeschooling. Nikisha, tell me, is it very different uh, to homeschool in Trinidad versus, let's say, in the States? Um, yes, it is. There's a lot more support in the U.S. than there is here. I mean, it's a new phenomenon, so to speak, locally. We just had our association, HAT, Homeschooling Association of Trinidad and Tobago. That was only launched just a couple of years ago. But you have um, organizations in Florida, for example, um, called HSLDA, like Homeschool Legal Defense As um, Association. And that's an umbrella under which most homeschoolers in the U.S. fall. So you find they have that legal defense, so they have the right to homeschool their children. They have material resources, they have co-ops, they have, I mean, there's a plethora of information that you can get from them. And that's one of the perks of being a member of HAT locally, because we are, I would like to say, almost partially covered, or at least advised by HSLDA.org, which is in Florida, based, it's Florida-based actually. And so we get a lot of information, a lot of support and stuff from or through them. Okay. Mm -hmm. So there is, so becoming a member of HAT, Hat mm -hmm. in Trinidad will give you some sort of at least legal advice, not yes. necessarily covering. Not necessarily. We, we will get for the $200, it's $200 per year. Okay. Right? Tell and us how do we become a member if I wanted to become a all member. Right. You can go on to the website, homeschoolTT.com. I believe it was Homeschool Life at one point in time. So it just changed. Well, I Googled it and it right. came up. If you just type in Homeschooling Association of in Trinidad, Trinidad and Tobago, it will come up. It right. will come up. So you can go online and you can see the benefits of becoming a member. Before that, you have the FAQs, which will be frequently asked questions that people will want to have, you know, they have information there regarding homeschooling, what people would ask, the most commonly asked questions. And um, you go on there and you, if you decide to come up, become a member, you make your bank deposit, whatever means they have. And once you become a member, there's a list of benefits. You have access to the board. They have quarterly meetings. You have representation. I don't know if people know, but even though um, it's a fairly new association, we have met several times with the Ministry of Education because we want to work in tandem with them, not against right. them. And so... What? What would those meetings look like? What are you guys working towards? Okay, well, members of the board at different times have met with the MOE just to make sure, for example, homeschoolers are not left out. In 2012 and 2013, for example, my two sons, they're the only teens that I have <laughs> of, the, of the six, my two sons were able to write SEA. Okay. In 2012, um, I was just able to sign my firstborn up. He was 11 at the time, and he was able to sign up in 2012, sorry, in 2011 to write the exam in 2012. Um, I just had to sign him up as a private candidate. In 2013, same thing, but the CAC was now a uh, part of the SCA. Right. So that second son was disadvantaged somewhat because he didn't have all the um, continuous assessment components, the creative writing and so forth right. going forward. And they've so since removed CAC again. They have since removed so it. It's, so that so now, now of it course facilitates makes it easier. Us. That's right. Okay, if so we choose to go that route, because some homeschoolers don't go that route of doing the SCA. Some either pay for them to go to a private secondary right. school or some of them just forego it and continue like myself. There are few of us, but Let continue through high school. If you choose to go down the SCA road, mm -hmm. at what point do you need to go and register with MOE? Usually just before the exam. So for example, my son was writing in 2012. I signed him up in 2011, around so, September, so October. So SCA is May of this year? That's right. When would I need to, to have registered? You should have registered in 20, um, in 20, 2015. 2015, October 2015. October 2015. Thereabouts, yeah. Okay, all right. And I mean... What does the, pr the process look like to register? Is it costly to register? No, no, basically just go in. Um, I can't even recall exactly what, but you went in with the child's birth certificate, I think it was, and you signed them up as a private candidate. And that was basically it. And that it. was it? Mm -hmm. Okay. So. And they would give you a letter in the mail, give you some correspondence that you know exactly what school he would be sent to to write to ask the exam. Where does he go? Yeah, you know? yeah they, will, they will zone or assign a school for him or her to write the exam. And, does he get to go into that school prior to, I mean, acclimatize? Is he just going to sit in this? I mean, no. as a homeschooler, mm -hmm. I, I can only imagine having done classroom at home, mm -hmm. and then I'm going to sit this huge exam among, like, strange kids. Well, one of the benefits of homeschooling is that you get to socialize your children. So they don't normally feel intimidated going into a classroom. Um, it may not be their norm on a daily basis, but once they're properly socialized, no environment would really intimidate them, per se. And um, what I did do with them, they had an opportunity to go to another primary school that my mom is like practically on the board of. Mm -hmm. And when they did their practice exams, they had an opportunity to go and sit with them. Right. Granted, it was an all-girls school. <laughs> that was another story. <laughs> I think they served as a distraction. But um, yes, they were able to go and do that. So they had that experience. But 
when it came to SC, I gave my sons no pressure. Right. Okay? It is not a, a make or break exam like people, you know, make it out to be. It doesn't determine their life's destiny. Um, in fact, when we homeschool, just to give you a little history, we homeschool from Monday to Thursday. They have Fridays off. And on a Friday, we, we meet with another or other homeschooling families, for that matter, that are all members of HAT, that share our common core beliefs and moral values, and we get together and our kids socialize. So in the throes of exam preparation, where some of their friends from church and other um, places were in lessons from sun up to sundown, right. Monday to, to Sunday, it seemed, they were having their days off on a Friday like normal, and we were schooling from Monday to Thursday, 8 to 1.30. Like no normal. pressure. And no pressure. they went on to pass for their first choice. They went on to pass for their first choice with very high marks. Even my son, who was a disadvantage with the creative writing paper, still attained his first choice, which is a very, as we call it locally, um, prestigious college. Right. So, yeah. So, so there is, I mean, at least in your example, mm -hmm. there really is no disadvantage education-wise, academically, no. to homeschool. I mean, a child can get in. Your sons have gone, they have taken up their spots in... One of them, my eldest, I sent him out in Form 1. Mm -hmm. He did phenomenally well. And then we brought him back home in Forms 2 and 3 to homeschool. Um, we had our reasons. Nothing was wrong with the school, but we just had our reasons. We wanted to motivate him and push him a bit more. And then for his Form 4 year, which, was st which started in September 2015, we put him back into the system because of the subjects he wanted to do. It's not that it was daunting for me. I couldn't do them. I mean, everything, as, as um, Karima said, everything is available online. So, you know, he could have continued. But because our tertiary level institutions are not yet up to scratch or on board with receiving a parent-generated transcript like they would be in the U.S., because colleges like Duke and Howard and, and, and Harvard do accept college generated um, parent generated transcripts okay. for their kids going into to college. In fact, in the US and universities abroad, they clamor for homeschooling students because they are so self motivated, they are so um, independent that, you know, and they've seen the benefits of having them on board. Okay. So, question what are the subjects that he wanted to do? That all sciences and all business. So, he's doing math. Um, math and English, add math, physics, chem, bio, economics, accounts. And when you say our tertiary education, mm -hmm. are you referring to tertiary like, level institutions yes. like University of West Indies, UTT, um, Costat? They are not yet on board with it, so they're still a bit archaic, so to speak, in requesting CXC classes for right. entrance. Okay, and so to go on to if. Had he done the subjects that he's doing, mm -hmm. and he, he would have had to go away or something to, to do the tertiary level education. If, or or study online, in, or study online, which he's not opposed to doing at all. And they're not deprived socially, but we'll talk about that in, right. in a bit. <laughs> okay, so, because uh, I'm, I'm trying to figure out the need to put him into, the, into, into public school. Mm -hmm. yeah, um, because he chose to do these, these science subjects. Mm -hmm. So, if he did it, homeschooling, is it that he would, he would not have been able to go to our When I called the Ministry of Education, they said that they, there was something called the third paper or paper three that he can do in lieu of the, remember these subjects require labs, right. which I can't facilitate at home. They have SBAs. So, right. CXC is not going to look at something that I mark and send in and submit. They're not going to look at that. So, for that reason, that was the reason, you know, pretty much why I felt like I had no choice at right. the time. But, yeah. but that is to make sure, he, that's if he's going into the local system. So yes. let's say someone's homeschooling and has no desire to go into the local tertiary education right, system. Right, but then they can write the SATs or the ACTs or whatever to get into whatever universities abroad they would like. All right. Or they could continue to study on, online. Okay, and so your children did not, I'm going to hand over to Karima here, because mm -hmm. I think Karima's situation is a little bit different. So your children went from preschool and you know, homeschooling. My first two were in standard ones and standard one and two when I took them out. They were at okay. a private primary school. But I, just like Karima, I was totally dis dissatisfied with the education system. So when, so you, I took pull, them out. when you pull your children out, mm -hmm. having already been enrolled in primary school, mm -hmm. what is the steps? Can you just pull them out and keep them at home? That's exactly what I did. But we have a law in Trinidad. <laughs> the law just basically states that the parents have the right to educate their children. So in no whatever one, matter, so they, no in whatever came, manner so they no see, one came they see and fit. Asked you, so no one came and no, asked but what you, I did just to make sure, to chime in. just to, to just to make sure, I made sure I kept records of everything they did. So that per chance a social worker showed up at my home, I had some infant, some stuff to right. show them that yeah, no, they are working. I'm, I'm going to I'm going to interject here because for me that's a real pet peeve mm -hmm. with our system. Yeah. 
because I've said it all the time. I mean, if your children look well kept, you ever look at my child, her hair is never combed. You know, she goes out half the time and forgets her shoe. And I've often said, you know, people just take my word for the fact that I have a curriculum and she's doing school. But I can very well be a proper delinquent parent and just don't want to get up in the morning and don't want to drop her to school. Because one day I decided I was homeschooling and I feel that there are so many children right now that don't go to school. And in our magazine, we, I wrote a piece saying homeschooling is not a fad because we don't have proper policing. I'm not sure what the legislation is, the policy is in terms of homeschooling because there's nothing to say that I have to join the homeschooling association. You know, I mean, as you say, I mean, did, did we have to go and register to say, well, Jessie never went to primary school. So, you know, there was no need to say I pulled her out of the system. She went, you know, we were, we were homeschooling from preschool. But um, that, that's, my, that's a pet peeve, you know, I mean, Karima, chime in here. Yeah, yeah. Chime in here and tell me what, what, you know. Did so I have a completely different approach. I actually think that a child's education is the family's ambit. I think it's scary when a state decides that they can legislate basically the forming of a human being's character. Um, their mind, how the mind works. Um, call me an artist if you wish, I don't mind the label. Um, and so, and there are numerous societies across the globe. But, but Karima, that's assuming that you and Nikki are not delinquent. And no, are hold doing on, the let right me finish, thing. let me finish. There are numerous schools as a construct of a particular ideology. What I was going to say is that there are numerous societies across the world, even here in the Western Hemisphere, where children just grow up with their families and they learn that socialization that we love to throw Talk around. About. What about the socialization? We're, we're getting ready to go on a break <laughs> yes. and I love where this conversation is going. I love where this conversation is happening because I mean, yeah. as a homeschooler, and I'm going to try to, to, to not be a homeschooler in this role, you know, but... On the flip side, I'll there are you parents when we that, I mean, they can't be trusted to raise their I'll own see you when we so come we're going to go on a break, stay here, come back and find out all about homeschooling in Trinidad and Tobago. <laughs> Today's topic is homeschooling in TNT and we're about to hear from Karina because Karima is charging the cost that we uh, you know we are supposed to raise our own children you know it's she's, she's going to I'm gonna let her talk um, but I, I'm, I'm trying to take the stance that yes I understand that you know we have a responsibility to raise our family and raise our children the way that we see fit but I think that that is heavily dependent on that parent and that family being responsible. I think that in society, you know, the government has a role in regularizing things because, now, we're, we're, let's not look at our government, our society, or what, whatever, you know, but at the same time, we, there must be some kind of regularization. I mean, I can't just decide, well, I don't believe in reading. And so life is just meant to be learned on the whim, you know? And, and, and so I just keep her home and do we just do what we want? I feel that, why, why? Because why then we'll have a wayward society. Will we? Well, I don't know, you tell me. See, so you have to start from a position of, and again, because I do so much perspective shifting work, you have to start from a position of where my perspectives coming from um, how am I socialized what is my norm what do I expect to be the norm right if you can ask those four questions honestly in this particular scenario a few things start popping up um, one is that regularizing is norming 
what is the point of norming why are we doing it is it serving our greater good and on and on and on and you can continue down that line and again as i was saying before we got to the break it's a construct of a particular ideology to norm to 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 put everybody in school and make them go through the same course of of i don't even know if it's knowledge of information thrown at you and hope that some sticks right. yeah because that is what it has become um it's a conversation that i have with my boyfriend all the time in terms of the fact that if you look at other social constructs where things surround the family and the family underpins the community and the community is a collection of families everybody has a role that they play yeah um you look at ancient societies and not so far back either because again they exist in latin america you have a healer or healers you have weavers you have farmers, you have fisher folk if you live near rivers or seas and so on and so on. Everybody in the society has a role. Everybody in the family has a role. And children take their role from the time they're two. And they can walk around behind somebody, right? They're behind mommy's skirts in the kitchen. They're following mommy when she's gathering in the fields because the whole family goes into the fields. They're following daddy when daddy goes doing something that's not too dangerous for them to come along. And as they get older, you know you increase the dangerous situations that you put them into because they have to learn to take over what daddy does or, and that's socialization that's a different type of norming that doesn't require reading writing so to your point yes this is a society now where information rules um and it would help to be able to learn to read um there are a whole lot of people who are very successful who have never learned to read yeah because they just use their God-given talents and gifts. Where's the space for that in our, in our education system? Right. Where's the space for people actualizing based on their skills, talents? And as I told you earlier, I'm huge on that, right? If you can sing, if you can dance, you're a natural dancer, you're a natural sports person. Where are those avenues that are not shoved to the side to after school happens? Well, I'm going to ask Riyad to chime in here because Riyad is a perfect example to have on because you didn't follow the, the typical career where, you know, I needed to be a scholar at whatever. And I remember interviewing you for the, my, my children's book. And for you, it was a bit of a challenge because you had three days of, of cricket because you were playing on three different teams. Yeah. And, I mean, and, and you weren't interested in school. So how, what is... No, 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 I was not, not, I wasn't interested in school. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be politically correct now. <laughs> yeah, um, it was difficult for me because at my age, I, um, I could have played in three different categories at school. And my mom never wanted that. So she had stopped. Why didn't she want it? Because she always wanted us to have a proper education. Right. Um, she never approved of me um, playing cricket. She, in fact, she never wanted me to play cricket. She never wanted me to become a cricketer. Right. Until I, um, <laughs> I actually played for Trinidad right. in the nineties, and that is when she realized that oh, this is my dream, this is my goal, and you know. Um, Would you say that you earn more money playing cricket than if you'd gone down the if you'd gone down the, the regular road? I definitely think so. Yeah. Uh, my wife. Me and my wife always have this this argument because she's an engineer and right. she don't believe that we should be getting paid so much money. <laughs> uh, that I should be getting paid more money than her. All right. you do is run because around and sweat. So many, yes. so many nights. Yes. Because our society, our society, ha places. Uh, but, premium. But also, they, premium. Premium. Yes. You know also, they, 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 If you're smart in in that way, if you have certain qualifications, then you're smart. But if, if, if you can pelt a ball and, and, and well, hit not, the ball, then you're not, not so just, smart. It's not, just, it's not just that, you know, we have, we have so many days that we go by that people don't know that the stuff that we go through, you know, we, we on but the that's field. that's the whole thing, you know. We're I on mean. the field from, from 10 to 5, you know, in the hot sun, you know, we know how hot the sun is now. We have people that, you know, it's sort of, they dictate our destiny, so to speak, selectors. Yeah. You know, you may be good enough, but they have their friends. Of course. Who they, you know, so more than ever now, we know we yeah. know how we you know, know how po politics yeah, you know, can influence and your and career. And we, we as as cricketers and you can especially athletes, we get treated much better away from home. You know, and it's it's an eye opener for for parents. You know, but this is news to my ears. I, I never. <laughs> 
I never knew about this homeschooling. You know, I never knew it was so prevalent in Trinidad. You know, I know about it in the U.S., but it's it's an eye opener for me. Yeah. Um, you know, probably my wife will have a look at this <laughs> later on. Yeah. Um, but for me personally, I I don't have the time to do it. Um, I know my wife will love to be at home. You know, and and me see about the family. You know, and, but it's it's a it's a good option. You know, and I. And if you having six kids and you do it for six well, kids, so definitely I'm, I'm about is, to, is working. I'm a, because, because you've spoken about the time, a lot of people ask me, how do you have the time? And I'd be honest, I mean, I'm going to answer my own question because I'm a homeschooling mom. The time that you take doing lessons and homework to prepare for SEA, we don't even spend that amount no. of time doing our entire no. curriculum. No. So when you look at, you know, I mean, and it's a question that I have, you know, to, uh, can, can working moms homeschool, you know, I mean, certainly, I mean, I'm a single mom, you guys have, have businesses, I have businesses. How do we fit it in? You know, Jessie does not do school during the day. She does school in the evening. And sometimes people would say, why is she now doing school? I'm like, y'all finish homework yet? And they would go, no. I was like, so how is it any different? She spent all day playing with animals, going to the vet, going to UWE and checking out a farm. I was going to ask, you know, about socializing with other, other kids. You know? <laughs> I'm so glad you asked too, Ed. Yeah. <laughs> Karima was like dying in Socializing. I'm so glad you asked that question. Well, let, while Karima composes herself, I will answer. That is a question that we are often asked. I don't know why it seems to be such a pressing question when the proof is in the pudding you could look at my kids and see they're not being raised in a bubble right even though i am sheltering them from some of the atrocities that are out there within the public um, system they are still i still tell them and i let them know exactly what's going on all right so for example um i remember reading this once and i found it was a fantastic analogy if you have a plant you would take that plant and you put it in a greenhouse because it's a young plant, it's a seedling. You wouldn't put it out in the, gra uh, in the ground, plant it and have it exposed to all the winds and the rains and everything, and the sun, because it can't handle it. Why is my child any less important than a seedling? My child is very, very important. So even though we do have them at home, they're not sheltered and, and clustered and, you know, quested and just, you know, protected from everything. They are aware. And in my particular case, well, there are six of them, so our school is full, <laughs> right? <laughs> but apart from that, um, the, gr the, member, the group of ladies that I meet with every Friday, they all have different children, different ages, and so forth. So my children are socialized not only on a Friday. Of course, during the week, they have our neighbors and so forth. In fact, I live in the middle of an, a neighborhood in Diego Martin that's predominantly made up of retirees right so right next door to me there are two retired princes, school principals so can you imagine how i was looked upon when they first heard of this crazy idea of homeschooling i have principals i have teachers i have all kinds of people living around me very few children but socializing is not just about sitting down in a classroom and talking and you know and and I, so I wanted i wanted to say that because right? it's it, it, limited it really to that. is who is best to uh, raising their kids and teaching them the proper moral values and, 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 and skills that they're supposed You're to have. You're helping defend Karima's You know what I'm saying? <laughs> not, a, not a classroom of their peers. Yeah. They're not socialized among their peers their yeah. same age. But I they're think that's because our norm has now become it needs stay a home and be on an we iPad or whatnot. That's, no. We're no longer playing in parks. Oh, and, we're exactly. no, and so because if we were like that, mm -hmm. then we wouldn't have people asking questions about homeschooling because my children stand up my child not children my child stands up in the bank and strikes up a conversation Mine as well. she's in the back there and i'm guaranteeing you she's writing mm -hmm. notes and, and talking and, and yes. knows everybody's name by the time we leave mm -hmm. wherever she is she's socializing That's right. because we mm -hmm. are not forming into what this new norm is is that you go to school and this is really the only place you meet people because mm -hmm. when we come home we shut but our life door is not in a classroom. We, we shut our That's door and life. we go behind the ipad mm -hmm. that you know? is not life anyway in a classroom from sitting down when you go out to work you're going to meet people of different ages different stages you're going to have to interact and interface with people the gas station attendant the cash at, at massey stores or wherever you go to do your shopping that's where you build relationships that's where you interact and stuff not in a classroom sitting down for six hours a day and i will take it further to say i've been reading so there's research and of course you know the, the cynic will tell you well there's research on everything yes and and, and they can justify anything maybe so but there is research surfacing now that says that children don't socialize in a school setting in the classroom. 
because they're sitting behind desks and being told to, sit, to shut up and, 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 and do what they have to do when they socialize at break time, lunch time, and maybe before and after school. And so it's a myth. But, but, and, but even in that situation, I mean, I'm a big advocate for free play because mm -hmm. I coach three to seven year olds. Mm -hmm. And I remember being a PE teacher in, well, a private public school and the principal having an issue with the amount of free play that I offer. And I had to say to her, so listen, free play is an integral part of, learning. of children learning. That is the time that you see children blossoming. It's the time that their creative juices flow. They well. need to come together. They need to learn to, to work things out. They, I mean, mud pies and, and, and using, solving. using the, the, the skipping rope for something other than Done. skipping. You know, right. and, and you see children really blossom and grow during free play. So even lunchtime, when you know, there are a thousand and one people saying, don't do this, don't do that. Don't use the ball for that, use the ball for this, this is what it's for. You know, I mean, how much are they really socializing? Point. Point. Very true. Yeah. I mean, you will know that you guys don't socialize on the field, you will socialize on the party after the, after the game. Drinking bears. <laughs> you don't, um, on the field, it's like war. You know exactly. I mean? so, but after the game, you know, before the, the match. The free play yeah, after. That is when you, you really socialize. But um, as I say, it's something new that I've learned and, you know, um, I'm... I'm glad that I came on the program, <laughs> right. you know, obviously. I wish I could have stayed for the entire program, as you know. I have, yes. I have so we are, we are going on a break, and when we come back from the break, we're going to lose Rayad. Rayad, thank you so much for coming. I hope that this has been an eye-opener for you. It and definitely is. Um, you say you're never too old to learn, so <laughs> definitely is. Oh, okay. Thanks for so having me. Thank you for, for coming. Really, thank you for, for being here. It's a pleasure meeting you guys. Stay here. Yeah. So we're gonna so we're gonna go on a break and when you come back it's just gonna be us girls. We're li we're losing our we're losing our guy. <laughs> yes. Okay, stay tuned and we're back with homeschooling when we come back. Okay, and we're having really, really great discussions on homeschooling in TNT in particular. And um, well, I think generally it's been a sort of a pros and cons. You know, we, we clearly have some advocates for homeschooling here with us. You know, just in case you're now joining us, Karima McKenzie and Nikki Rodriguez, both homeschooling moms, and they have been sharing their passion for homeschooling with us. Nikki, you are a founding member of the Homeschooling Association of Trinidad and Tobago. Tell me some of the things that you guys have going on um, at the association. Okay, well, we would have uh, quarterly meetings where the members will be able to come and hear what we are doing. We will offer tips. Uh, at the last meeting, we had one of our members, who's also a board member, speak about homeschooling all the way through high school. She just successfully did that. She happens to be a Trini Canadian. And um, she's married to Trini, but she's Canadian born. And so are her children. Um, and the eldest just went to university after being homeschooled all the way through. He's actually going to medical school. Okay. Right, so it is possible. So we try to encourage people to let them know, hey, this is possible. This is happening. We are the ones that are doing it. And there are others out there like us. Um, we try to bring back uh, former homeschoolers. I remember at one point in time, we brought back a young man who was able to write CXC and so forth. And he ended up getting, I believe it was like 13 some ridiculous number of um, CXC passes did phenomenally right. well. So we always bring things back to people so that they, could they can be encouraged. We offer um, support, of course, and we want to encourage people to join HAT because with membership you get that kind of support. You cannot homeschool in a bubble. You should not actually by yourself. And what we try to do is to get members to network so that, for example, the group that I belong to, most of them live in the East, so I would normally go to the East on a Friday to fellowship with them and have a good time. My kids get to socialize, <laughs> big right. word, um, you know, but they don't socialize just once a week, but that's just one example. Yes. Um, but if other people that are homeschooling, and I know there are many other people homeschooling because I see posts on social media ever so often, people would ask me questions, they would reach out. They can get together with people in similar ge ge um, geographic locations so that you know you have a, somebody to bounce ideas off of. Your kids have someone that's of like passion or like mind doing the same thing. Right. So they don't feel isolated or left out. Um, for example, HAT is actually having a fun and family day. 
it's coming up on May 21st. Oh, and that's, that's my birthday. Hey, cool. <laughs> so we're having that to encourage all prospective homeschoolers. Yes, Marsha. <laughs> to encourage all homeschooling, um, whole, yeah, we're messing up now. <laughs> all prospective um, homeschoolers, people who are, in, are curious about homeschooling, people who are, who are homeschooling that are not yet members, members as well to come out and be a part of a fun fellowship family day um it's going to have lots of activities for adults and children to do walk with your picnic basket right so you can have that time um where is more than likely be at 10 o'clock from 10 in the morning until evening time okay um or afternoon time and it'll be at victory heights um for now um there That's will be a, the east yes okay. there will be a cover charge um, because of course we have to use the facilities there. There's their courts, their yes. swimming pool okay. facilities, and so forth. So it's really going to be a really fantastic time and a good time to come and hear from us homeschoolers. You know what it's about. We can share swap stories, talk about the different curricula that's out there. People right. are always asking, and um, get whatever advice you need. Any questions you may have, you know, you can ask and meet some of us face to face. So our hour is going to come to an end very shortly, and there are just a few things that I want to ask. For the non-homeschoolers who are interested in homeschooling, how do you go about choosing a curricula? There are so many things out there. I mean, up to recently, I'm still, and I've been homeschooling since April 2009, and I'm still toying with, because practically every year, something new comes out. My husband and I were privileged to attend the same HSLDA um, Florida, FPEA, sorry, um, homeschool convention in May of 20. 15 2014 and we were just blown away <laughs> by how much material there is out there right um the, i mean from alpha omega to sunlight to well, horizon is a part of alpha omega there's so many wisdom is from canada so many programs out there that people can choose from the most expensive like sunlight for example to some of the lesser ones and even well, there are free ones rule, online i mean i use my, my father's, father's rule and i, I love that to you. my father's rule yeah. and it came up to like fifteen hundred dollars mm -hmm. including every everything single thing, thing the need. blocks the clock the All everything the and that was for the entire for year, the entire that was for year. The entire that's right year. that's a good thing because if you're homeschooling a lot of kids like me you can always pass this stuff down you don't have people telling you well this book is out of, is 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 no longer you need the, other, the second right. edition or the third edition it's the same thing you're using and it continues and to, it works last question i mean how financially affordable I mean, is it is it something that that the average person can afford i mean i don't have a, do you need a specific room a classroom setup you know, I mean, what is it like? How, how, how was, out there is it? It was always my dream to have the quintessential homeschooling room that never happened. <laughs> right now we homeschool either around the dining room table mm -hmm. or we homeschool in the porch. We homeschool when we go out. I mean, any outing when we go on our family vacations, that's also a learning opportunity for the children. Um, when my husband travels and stuff, we normally tag along with him and we make it a learning experience. Life is homeschooling, it's homeschooling basically. You know, every opportunity you can find, you teach into it. And that's how they that's how they learn it's not between eight and two or whatever hours they have in school in fact when you think how about many how hours much teaching, would you say that it takes it takes the homeschool a child so that you know someone who says because Rayad had said he wasn't sure if you had time if he had time to be able to do it I, I know Jesse's curriculum even with with break you know she can finish it in two days in two hours a day and and just like like you she only does four days a week yeah Basically, about within about four hours, they can complete their day's work. I mean, you really think about it. And four and hours is at secondary school level, or I mean, they may like take a little longer. Okay. But my son, for example, he wakes up when he wants, not late. When I say he wakes up when he wants and he gets started, he wakes up as early as six, six thirty sometimes and gets his work started. Sometimes right. by ten thirty, so eleven, he's finished. finished. And right. then he gets to And then, of course, when you're when when you're doing something older, he can now go on to oh, yeah, to read his own stuff versus with us where we just through everything. He just completed a course at the University of Queensland in Australia at thirteen. He got his he got a diploma. In in criminology. So Karima, we're getting ready to wrap up some of your closing comments. So I am even a little more off the beaten path than that because that was one of the things. I actually got in contact with somebody and had when I decided once and for all I was doing it. And um, again, norming, I have a huge, huge issue with us feeling the need to drive all our children along a particular path of learning for no good reason. Um, because if you are passionate about X and your skills and talents fall into that, then by all means, you learn what is necessary for that. So basic math and English, fine. That is a ground rule, right? You need to be able to write a decent letter, simple interest, permeter. There are things you need to know. 
right outside of that however I believe that education needs to evolve to the place where it's again grounded in the children's passion and what they are innately talented in right yes, and so I, I don't do a set curriculum she does math on Khan Academy and she loves math she loves science and she does a whole lot of science she likes history which is interesting so she and she reads everything I mean my child will read labels I was like that so she, we go to the library probably every week and a half to two weeks six books each time and one of those generally would be a history book right right so she's learning about Nelson she's learning about Nelson Manda and the Titanic and, and Marie Antoinette that? she's nine okay. Winston Churchill right and so that's the other thing I think when you are homeschooling you have the freedom to expose your child to as much information as That's possible right. they yes. don't have to wait till secondary school to That's learn European right. history it's so backward exactly. yeah um, and so I learned in world history I learned while I was teaching my year old. I'm telling you, you I never learned in secondary See? school yeah. and so for me that is my thing it's about flexibility it's about the math and English bedrock but then after that it's yeah, about exactly. what is equipping her yeah. for where she wants to exactly. go and what right. she wants to do and I'm big on the moving of the body so she's doing competitive gymnastics she does yoga and so on okay. so I'm different I don't have a curriculum great thank you so much ladies for, so for coming on thank you to my audience for, for listening in please find us on Facebook so that you can get more information you can find Nikki find Karima on Facebook as well reach out to them I know they're always welcome willing to help Next week we do autism, because we're celebrating Autism Week, Awareness Week, and so we're going to be talking about autism. Thank you so much for joining us, and we'll see you next week right here, Monday at 12.30, and we discuss autism. Ciao!